Welcome back everybody, welcome if you are new, back with NASCAR Thunder 2003. Last episode, we ran at Las Vegas and Atlanta. We finished 11th at Las Vegas. We got really lucky because uh, we missed pit road trying to get down into it. Got wrecked brought, and it brought out a caution and there was only like 12 of us in the lead lap and one guy blew an engine. So we got super lucky with that. But uh, Atlanta, we fell back to 42nd like normal. But I was trying a uh, new strat where you have the stability limited and we were definitely a lot faster than we were previously. But like not losing spots as fast. We slowly like, bled our way back uh, to the end of the field at Atlanta. Las Vegas, I think we were slowly getting there until the pit stops happened and we got wrecked because I missed pit road and all that so that was my fault but this episode we're going on to darlington and bristol so two very tough tracks so it's going to be interesting to see how this stability goes on at darlington i've done it at bristol before and we've done all right as long as i don't hit a car or the wall too hard we should be able to do decent there so i'm gonna get on darlington here and see how we can do hopefully i can try and contain the car all right got down to a 28.8 basically a 28.9 uh, Mark Martin got pulled with a 28.4, so we're not that far off him. We're like half a second off of him pretty much, which is not too bad at all. Need to not get too sideways like that, but first lap shouldn't be faster. I'm already smacking the wall. No damage on the car though, so I'll take that. That's pretty lucky. Try to get a good three and four here to get a lot of speed. Just try not to get the wall or get sideways. Don't know how I clipped the wall there. That was crazy. I thought I was going to get stuck in it. But have more speed here. We're already 27. And that's a 29.4. So that was a really bad lap. So I know I can get a much better lap. We can qualify pretty good here. Just don't go and smack the wall. Really bad exit off a of two. But so far, this is still a pretty good time. I feel like. Just need to not overcook three and four. Overcooked it a little bit on entry, but got down really well for the exit, which I'll take. Let's go. That should be a lot better of a time. A 28. Oh, I thought it was going to be a 28.9. 29.0, but that'll put us 16th. Let's go. Very good qualifying. This is Joe Moore along with Barney Hall for MRN, and we're live at Darlington Raceway, the granddaddy of super speedways in Darlington, South Carolina for the Carolina Dodge Dealers 400. Barney, drivers love coming to Darlington because of its history, but they often leave wishing they hadn't shown up. Why is that? The tight groove they have here makes this a very difficult racetrack. It takes total concentration, but the drivers all race long to be successful here. An impressive average finish record for Dale Jarrett. Man, he is amazing. And what a boost towards the championship that gives him. You don't even need that many wins if you're finishing in the top 10 every week. Todd Bodine is towards the bottom of the points list this season. Well, there's always going to be someone who has to fill in the bottom of the points list. Of course, none of these guys want to ever see their name there. Sometimes it's just not your season to shine. Ashton Lewis has not had much of a year so far on these speedway tracks. And a good finish would go a long way in boosting that team's morale. I guarantee it would make a whole lot easier to come to these racetracks. that was pretty cool they talked about how well Dale Jarrett's like average finishes have been because he's won three of the races and the one race he didn't win he got a uh, 12th in at uh, Vegas because of the weird caution and stuff I just completely slowed myself and Ricky Rudd down I don't know how it slowed down Ricky Rudd that much from getting into his back end but it did I don't know I had like a magnet to him and it just slowed him up almost wrecked there with Ash and Lewis because they didn't talk about us talk about him for some reason now, Darlington is hard to go too wide at, so we'll do our best. I'm already wrecking the car. Jeez, that is sketchy. Somehow, we didn't lose any spots out of that. I'll take it. It's only a 29 lap race, kind of a shorter one, but bigger track and stuff. Because we had 32 at Atlanta, which that's a mile and a half. I guess Darlington's a 133, I think. And, but we are, do have less laps, so. Hopefully we can kind of hold people off. Oh my goodness, I was just trying to get down to the bottom there. We're definitely down on the bottom, I'll tell you that. Jesus. Okay, yeah, this is that's the problem with the limited stability help is uh, I don't got grip. I'm going to try and move up up here because uh, if I get sideways, I get clipped, we are going for a ride. 
I just gotta like let off the gas and the steering for the most part, just let it do its thing, and it, was, it can kind of uh, straighten out pretty decently. Try not to do that very much, because it is very easy to get out of whack. But at least I can know I can run lower than the dotted white line now with the uh, stability help not fully on because it doesn't slow me down anymore down there. So I can kind of take it below the white line and it'll be all right. As long as I can keep a handle on the car, but this track is being rough right now. I thought I might be doing all right at this track just because it's a very skinny track. I might be able to hold people off, but I am all over the place. I cannot hold a line to save my life right now. Just getting way too sideways and stuff, which has not been good. Okay, Jeff Purvis really wants bias. I have so much damage on the car right now. Holy crap. That, like, this in Bristol back-to-back -back is diabolical. Like, these are the, like, two roughest races, I feel like, on a, on a race car. I've blown an engine at both of them in this career. Getting a hit going into pit lane once here, and then the other at Bristol just wrecking. Just ended up in a wreck and stuff, and wreck and spinning out, getting hit by multiple cars and all that. Go, Jeff Purvis, go. Please just get by me, please. Stop hitting me in the rear end. Because I'm just trying to go the fastest I possibly can and not lose the car. It's very hard to not lose the car. That's the hardest part of this whole thing. I'm racing myself here. I don't need to be racing everybody else. I just need to race myself. I'm getting spun. Okay, then. And that's going to definitely be a caution. Are we going to blow our engine? No, not quite. Okay. I'll take it. We're not a lap down. We're going to pit and get all this damage fixed, and we'll see what ends up happening after that. That was crazy. I, like, I tried to get down to the bottom, and we were barely getting uh, clipped, and it just kept spinning me out over, like, the further and further we went. It just kept spinning out, so that sucked. Well, they made this car look a lot better than it just did, and uh, even doing that pit stop, nobody else went down. I'm kind of shocked, because if I can go 19 laps on fuel, we'll make it to the end, and we won't have to pit, which would be huge. But uh, I'm shocked nobody else pitted because some people probably could make it on fuel. We definitely are off pace now. I feel like our engine is hurt, but maybe not. I don't know. We just have so much aero damage. It's crazy. But uh, us being in the back might be a better thing so I can stop getting hit and spun out right now because I am struggling here big time. Bristol's not going to be pretty either, most likely. That's going to be a rough one too. But uh, I had a problem with the uh, pit stop also. The right front changer went to go get up from the right front to run around and fell on his ass. Oh, right on his face, really. So, our pit crew is messing up a big time. The right rear changer messed up the last two races, like both races last uh, last episode. Like, going, just putting on the um, tire. The gun failed both times. I feel like that's just a him problem. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, a whole mess. And, like, yeah, people are literally pitting, like, two laps into this run. I, I don't understand why they didn't pit with when the caution was out. Because I honestly have a feeling, like, might be able to stretch it the entire way. Might not, though. And I might have to come in for, like, a splash and go with, like, two tires or something at the very end. All right. We have gotten all the way up in the third now with everybody pitting. I've ran a couple of my fastest laps in the race so far, like I ran a 29.5, 29.6, and then I got down to a 29.4, but we did hit halfway on fuel on lap 28, or 18 that is, so that's like 8, 9 laps into the run. I really don't think I'm going to make it on fuel is the rough part, I, I think that we're going to be a little short unless I can like start lifting and coasting a whole bunch and trying to make it on fuel that's the only way i could like make it is if we really really risk it on uh like stretching the fuel big time which i don't know how that will go i'm gonna try it and just see if i can coast a lot of these corners and like let off a ton on entry way before uh we're actually gonna lead a lap here we're getting bonus points boys let's go Five bonus points for leading the lap because nobody pitted under caution with us for some reason. But hey, I'll take it. And I'm going to see if I can try and stretch this fuel somehow. Oh, we're very low on fuel now. That's not good news. And I cannot stay out of the wall, so. 
Like, I'm trying to just coast, and I'm just drifting, so I'm going to have to come and pit. Our tires aren't good either, so it'd probably be a bad idea just to take a splash of fuel, but we pretty much would be in last anyway, so I'm going to come and take a splash of fuel with no tires. Um, it's going to be in three and four up here. So I was trying to save fuel, and I just lost a ton of time for no reason, so I'm literally going to come in, take like half a can of fuel, and get back out there and see what happens because fuel tank's almost empty there definitely slow on the entry but it is what it is we'll see what we can do not full tank we'll get five can or 0.5 cans and we'll see where that puts us we'll probably be last anyways oh somebody blew their engine that's big uh, i don't think that's going to bring out a caution also so that's unfortunate but uh if the caution would have came out i would have been happy uh, just because we would have been in a decent spot, but can you guys plug up get going? I don't think it's gonna take seven seconds five seconds. It is all right And are we gonna fall to dead last? Maybe this is like the rest of the car is coming by and I'm on old tires and the try and slide up here Yeah, we're in 39th 40th 41st 42nd 43rd behind us We're gonna get one spot back because it looks like Kevin Harvick blew his engine and uh, that is unfortunate. We're definitely going to be in last because I'm going to be off pace with these old tires and sliding like that. That doesn't help anything. But hey, we led some laps. We got five bonus points. That's pretty cool. And Junior is getting ready to lap us. I'm going to get down out of his way for the straightaway. He's going to put us a lap down and we're going to hit the white flag with him. That is unfortunate because, like, if we would have been able to stay out on our fuel, I think we just would have lost the lead because we were right around that same position when we went and pitted. And uh, we were already, like, off pace anyways, going slow, trying to save fuel. I could have finished, like, top five. Holy crap, these tires are so shot. Like, I can't even, I can't even handle them. And we're on the white flag anyways. Don't hit me, don't hit me, don't hit me, don't hit me, don't hit me. I don't know where all the cars are. I'm going to try and go down after him. And I clipped him. Never mind. I was trying to time it to get down out of the way. These tires are so shot. Yeah, the red rear tires. Oh my goodness, you can't even hit the throttle. That's such a bad idea. All right, I'm never doing that again. That is such a bad idea. At least we were last anyways. I didn't lose any spots, but it damaged the car a little bit more than needed. Still gets us some decent money because we qualified very well, which is awesome. Junior gets to win. He actually might be in front of uh, Jarrett now. Where did J Dale Jarrett finish is the main thing because he was only 12 points back from him. And I'm just happy we led some laps. That was awesome that we led laps. Jarrett finished seventh. He led no laps, 146 points to 185 points. So Junior is going to be your new points leader on the year now. We are at 1.4 million dollars now, which is great going on to Bristol and What do we want to do to this car? Um, engine wise we got a 63 a 64 nothing really that good This one's super worn out like once this finishes after this race I'm gonna repair number 12 here So might as well use number 12 here and get the most out of it We're, then we'll be using 11 for a while pretty much and uh, we will see what we can do from there. So I'm gonna stick with that one. And then chassis wise, we just got this chassis back. Do I put this one on repair now or do I put number eight on repair actually? Let me go see, is number eight's chassis actually decent to repair? So if we do number eight, that's gonna get it back up to 68. Oh wait, no, it's gonna get it back up to 73 wear, 68 grip. Not great. What is the other one gonna be? 75 grip. See, that's so much better. It's crazy. But right now it's still at 68. It's still at pretty good grip, which is gonna be this one's max. So I guess might as well do this one. It will, I can do it in four races. It won't be that big of an issue because uh, we'll use one race here with the old one and uh i'll stick on this tire uh grip and everything for now for bristol and then we'll move on to the other chassis for the, some more races and then we'll get this one repaired after that we got engines one getting repaired after this race and chassis also a new one getting built in four races same with the engines so everything is moving along as it should nine more races until that chassis downforce is finished and i can't even see what we've researched i want to see how many times we've researched uh like tire wear and stuff like that but 1.29 million now still trying to rack up the money where do we fall to in points after that we're down to 26 that is unfortunate that we're that far down but it is what it is junior takes the points lead 27 
27 ahead of Dale Jarrett, and Dale Jarrett has won three races on the year and finished seventh and 12th in the two that he did not win. So Junior is having a phenomenal uh, season consistently up in the top five probably every race. So he's having a very good season right now to try to win that championship, even though it's only five races in, but it's looking good for him. All right, I was able to get a 15.650 in practice. I think a 15.2 is the pull by Scott Wimmer. He always gets the pull here at these like short tracks for some reason at Bristol and Martinsville. I feel like he's always on pole. So he, he does very well at these tracks all the time. But we'll see what kind of time we can run. Second lap should have a better shot at it. 22nd already with a 6.11. Maybe won't be able to get a better time than that. Even though we might have some more speed to the line there, but it all depends on how well you can hit these corners because it's very easy to mess up such short times around the track. It's uh, very easy to have different times. 6.11, I'll take 22nd. That's not too bad. Welcome, everyone, to Bristol, Tennessee for today's NASCAR Winston Cup race, the Food City 500, right here on MRN. This is one of the most exciting tracks in the NASCAR Winston Cup series. So many cars, so little space. Wouldn't you agree? I think the old phrase, rubbing is racing, explains exactly what we're going to see in this one. Tight, fast racing with a lot of bumping and banging for position. Just what these NASCAR fans love to see. The 127 car hasn't made much of a move in the points so far. Yeah, those guys have been working so hard this year. It's a shame it doesn't really show in points. Just seems they can't keep that car out of trouble on race day. Maybe their luck will change today. After finishing second twice to Dale Earnhardt Jr. for the Bush Series Championship, Kenseth beat him out for Rookie of the Year in 2000. And he did it without qualifying well. Despite only two top 10 starting spots, he posted a 14th place points finish and a win and 11 top 10s. Ryan Newman has a solid top 10 spot in the standing so far. I had a chance to talk to him this morning and he's looking forward to this race. He feels they have a very strong car that can pick up some more points this week. We'll keep an eye on him. For the land of the free and the home of the brave. Oh my god, a McDonald's car is on the front row? That looks crazy. And the McDonald's, the M is so far off. That bothers the hell out of me. It's so off-centered. All right, let's see how we can do. 50 laps here. We have really good speed on that restart. Getting bumped from behind, too, but we're all right. We, I feel like we have more control at Bristol here than we did at Darlington, at least. Because Darlington was real rough. But we'll do the best we can here. Hopefully we don't, don't get bumped too many times or I don't miss the corner like that too many times where we're gonna be three wide on some exits because that's gonna make it very sketchy. I just need to try to hold the yellow line the best we can. If we get past the outside, we get past the outside, but I just really gotta hold the yellow line down here for the most part. Jeff Green, do not do it. I thought Jeff Green was gonna go under that yellow line and just completely dump me there. It was, it was looking like it. I would not have been shocked. It wouldn't be the first time somebody's done it, honestly. Now we're three wide on the exit because I was under the yellow line. Tony Stewart's T-Rex like Raptor car looks really cool. I love that thing with the caution tape on the back. It looks so good. I love that scheme. We are dropping spots a lot quicker than I was expecting here, honestly. I thought with how skinny of a track. Oh, wow, Dale Jarrett's way the hell back here. Oh, uh, Junior's way back here, too. Holy crap. I don't know why they're so far back here. They must have had terrible qualifying times. That is crazy. Usually Junior, I feel like, is really far towards the front at this track but maybe not this time, not this week. And he is just stuck behind me as well right now, which is uh, unfortunate for him. I'm not necessarily trying to hold him back, but now he's getting by us, so I'm getting loose. Thank goodness Ryan Newman didn't close that too fast. But we are bleeding off these spots very, very quick. I thought I was gonna be able to hold off people for longer. We definitely need to pick up seven seconds, like a lap. A seven seconds a lap would be fantastic. We're already getting the wall. Got Ricky, or that's Bobby Hamilton on our inside, not Ricky Rudd. My apologies, Bobby. I'm getting sideways on the exit, trying to straighten the car out. Some Bill Elliott under us. Trying to stay off the wall and Jeremy Mayfield. Nemechek is getting me on the left rear on that straightaway, almost hooking me into uh, Mayfield. I am already getting loose, that is yikes. I thought we were gonna be feeling good for this race. But we are falling back very, very quickly. 
here at Bristol. Bristol is one of the tougher tracks for us anyways. Martinsville is definitely the better short track for us. That and Richmond. Richmond is fantastic for us. I think we finished like top 20 there last season, I want to say. Like we finished really good there, or top 30 at least. We might have been in the 20s, but we, we did very good at Richmond last season. I'm excited to go back there whenever we do. I'm hoping uh, we do soon. But hopefully we can uh, try to not finish last year, but it seems like I'm probably the slowest one here because everybody's in a train right behind me. Nobody's able to just get by me super quick though, so I'm trying to hold them back. Got John Andretti right behind us, and then the fantasy driver of the 117. I just overcook the corners. Like, sometimes I'm super loose, and sometimes I'm super tight like that. I don't get it. I don't get sometimes why we're super loose, and sometimes we're super tight. Makes no sense, but either way, we're doing the best that we can. We had a 15.759 in this race, which is not that bad, honestly, for our race pace. Like, if we can keep that up, that'd be great. But we ran a 16.2 on that last lap. I think that was also getting hit, which did not help. Yeah, 16.1 on that lap. That was a little better, but not much. I just really need to not overdo the corners on entry, because I keep messing that up completely. That's what's been killing me the entire time, is just completely messing up the corner entries with too much speed. But we're slowly bleeding these spots, and the leaders are catching us. So we got like 10 more laps or so until we're probably going to pit, if not maybe a little later. I'm going to try and bank on a caution to coming out for us to have to pit, because I do not want to have to pit here under green. Ooh, somebody blew their motor. Who is that? That is a 115. That is a fancy driver. I think somebody just ran into the fancy driver trying to pit. That could bring out a caution. I think that's happened here before where somebody blew a motor and then the, the uh, pit stop started uh, starting. Oh boy, I'm losing it. Uh, and then somebody ran into the car that was blowing up already and caused a big wreck. So I'm hoping that a caution can happen either on pit entry, pit exit, because we still have a little bit before we need to pit. All right, we're very low on fuel now. I thought we were going to be able to go to almost 30, but... We're not going to be able to. I'm going to wait until it says very, uh, fuel is very empty or whatever. Because I want to try and stay out as long as we can. We already went a lap down the Sterling Marlin, who is the leader currently. And I'm pretty sure we're pitting on the front stretch. I can't 100% remember, but I believe we are. Okay, fuel tank is almost empty. Uh, yeah, okay, and I'm getting rear-ended. Thank you. We're pitting this time. Because we're going onto the front stretch here, and I'm just going to try and hang a left and hope this is my pit entry. I think it is, but I could be 100% wrong. Who knows? Don't need to repair that damage. And yes, we are on the front stretch. Thank goodness. changer i've got it i've got to replace them that's three out of four races in or like the last four races he has screwed something up every single time it, the other two were the right rear that time was the left rear putting it on like come on man like you have one job literally one job and you completely screwed up every time I, i've got to get rid of them are you kidding? I barely hit the wall and my car just spun immediately around. Like, there's nothing I could do there. I was just riding my race. We're already two laps down. I think we're the only car two laps down. And they're saying the caution's on him. Doesn't make any sense. But I completely, I tapped the wall, spun it straight around. Like, literally nothing I could do there. That's unfortunate. We're already 42nd anyways. We're not going to gain any spots because we are the only car two laps down. Which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. I think Gordon was in the lead, and Jay McMurray, Scott Wimmer were like top three, which was crazy. Not Gordon being in the lead, but the other two for sure. But uh, checkered flag is in the air because we're two laps down. We were getting close to the, to the finish, but uh, we're going to finish back in 42nd again. Definitely struggled here still and had a ton of damage on the car. And who gets to win? Gordon gets to win still. We still get a decent bit of money because we qualified well, 230,000 at least. S. Finch, the uh, 115, blew his motor 30 laps ago. That's kind of crazy, but Gordon getting the win. We'll have to go check out the overall points now.
We've got 1.34 million dollars. I know the uh, Dega's got to be coming up soon. Yeah, three races away is Dega. We got Texas, which we're going to probably struggle at. Martinsville, we can do decent at. Dega, we're going to do very good at. We could win there. We won there last season. It was the second race last season there, but we did win it. So we have a chance there for sure. We have fallen back to 31st in the points, but I want to go see the top of the points because I don't know where Junior or uh, Jarrett were at. So it's actually a two-way tie for second place. Gordon is two points back from them, but 20 points back from Junior. 30 points back from junior is mark martin so pretty tight with the top five still gordon getting that win sterling marlin had a pretty solid race but i don't know where junior and jared were in that race at all but uh we had a rough race a rough two races there rough episode overall which uh with darlington and bristol being back to back that's going to happen but we can go and repair this engine now which is going to be very needed because it's down to 61 on its power. Holy crap. It's going to get back up to 72. We could do it in four race time. I think I want to 111,000, which is not too bad. We'll have a new one built and a new uh, engine and chassis done at the same time also, which is going to be really nice. So let's modify the car here for Texas. We'll get our newer engine on here. It's only 67. It's not super powerful at all. And we'll get our better uh, chassis here with the 70 grip, which is not great either. So we'll do the best we can next episode. Martinsville is definitely going to be better for us, but we'll do whatever we can all, all together. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Appreciate you guys for watching as always and I'll catch you guys in the next one.